that most men live lives of quiet desperation. It's one of my favorite quotes ever because it's true. You just li you're just in this world where you just can't wait to just run away. But I think one of the reasons why these people have this deep-seated anger and resentment is there's a bunch of people out there that have these lives that are deeply unsatisfying because I think there are so many people that are working all day long doing something that is deeply unsatisfying and, and almost painful. Yeah, soul killing. Soul killing. Yeah. They're stuck in traffic all day, and then they're stuck in a cubicle after that. They, 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 they relish the time to take a sh in the bathroom and look at their phone. I mean, they literally do that. That's a, a highlight of someone's day. They get in traffic on the way home. They get home after that. They're watching television, and they're f If people have a regular day job, if you could just find some one thing that you do as a passion project and just keep building on it. Just keep at, keep watering it, keep adding fertilizer, keep giving it attention, keep giving it focus, and you can escape. You can escape, and you can be self-serving. You could be okay. You're gonna be okay. For making furniture feels good. If you make furniture, you make furniture for a living, and you, you feel a great satisfaction out of that, and you sell that furniture, look, man, if you can do that, you could, you could cut those corners perfectly and sand everything down nice and stain it, and then it's done, and you get this satisfaction, and you sell it to someone, and that pays your bills. That is infinitely more satisfying than being stuck in some fucking cubicle working for someone that you don't want to work for, having to have these stupid fucking office meetings, talking to people in human resources, sitting down with your supervisor where they evaluate your job performance, and you, you know, you're not really, you know, you, you really need to be enthusiastic about this company. This company is your future this kind of like you're like Fuck, kill me now you know there's a lot of people out there that would way rather do something else and i hope they understand that they can and people that are trapped in bad situations one of the problems is you feel like this is your future you feel like you're fucked and you can't get out of that there's no hope there's no light at the end of the tunnel there's no rainbow and if you feel like that that alone can be incredibly defining and limiting but if you can look at if you look at yourself objectively and say, okay, I kind of am fucked here. I'm in credit card debt. I'm working in a shitty job. I, I, I don't like what I'm doing, but I have some ideas. I need to feed those fucking ideas. And I, fe I, I need to feed them and water them. And I need to set aside a certain amount of time every day to just try to make those things happen. You can do that. Everyone has a different personality. They have different, different interests, different different things that they would be really satisfied pursuing. That's not encouraged. The, the, what's encouraged is go find a job. What's encouraged is go find some place that you can shove yourself into. Go find a square hole that you can stick your round peg and just and jam it in there and shave down the top and the bottom so you slide in with all this extra space on the sides and feel like for the rest of your life because you need a job because you're in debt because you have credit cards because you have student loans because that's what everybody does and so you do it too that's what's wrong you, you have an apartment you have to pay for you have a car you leased you have a wife that you have to feed you have a child you have to raise you have to you have your mortgage you have your this you have your that and that's where it all comes from well, the opportunity takes place usually when you're young and you don't have any responsibility. That's when you have your options. Well, your options are severely limited the more you gather responsibilities. Like, if I had to, as a 51-year-old father of three, married man, pays taxes, has a house and a mortgage and a business and all that jazz, if I had to quit everything now and struggle the way I struggled as a stand-up comedian, it would never work. But the only way I could be this person now is if I took that chance when I was 21, when I was dead broke and had my cars repossessed and all that stuff. That's the only way you, you ever get where you want to go. You have to, you have to take a path that's dangerous. And most people want to take the safe path. And the safe path leaves you stuck in quiet desperation almost every time. It's hell. It's hell. But can people just make that change? I mean, yes, look, you can, I believe that. But you can. have to plan it out. The way you can change is you have to put aside enough money to give yourself a window. And then you have to have a plan. And you have to spend all your waking hours outside of whatever shit job you do planning your escape. And you have to come to the realization very clearly that you f***ed up and you got yourself stuck. 
So whatever you're doing, you have to do it like your life depends on it. And whether it is you're trying to be an author and you're going to, you're going to, if you're going to try to be an author and you're working eight hours a day, plus commuting, plus family responsibilities or whatever else you have, whatever time that you have, you have to attack like you're trying to save the world. You're trying to save your life. You don't want to drown. That one and a half hours a day that you have to write, God damn, you better be caffeinated and motivated. You got to go. You got to get after it and you got to have discipline. That's most people don't have those things. Most people don't understand what it's like to, to really go for something and to know that the consequences of not doing that are horrific. I think here's an important thing too. Failure is important. It is important. I think failure teaches you things that you don't learn from success. I think failure gives you an opportunity for self-examination and also gives you a feeling that is very uncomfortable. And that very uncomfortable feeling helps you grow. That when you feel like you screw something up, like when I've had bad podcasts, my podcast has always gotten better afterwards. When I've had bad stand-up sets, I've always gotten better after that because those bad sets motivate you. They get, they give you a perspective like, hey, here's some clear examples of where you fucked up. Yeah, what not to do. Yeah, don't, and don't look at these failures as like proof that you suck. Look at them as opportunities for growth. Look at them as opportunities to be motivated to do better. You have to make mistakes. You've been there, you feel it, you understand what it is, and then you have that time to adjust. That's why losing in life is so important. Whether it's getting dumped, getting fired, losing a game, lo loss. Those feelings where things didn't work out your way, that's important because it lets you know this is the bad feeling that comes when hmm. it goes wrong and you improve and then it makes the good feelings of victory all the better. And I mean that you know in a relative sense, like even getting good at something, forget about victory. Like, making a terrible book that gets rejected by every publisher and then writing a really good one and people accept it and you're like, fuck, I got better. Yes. Like that's no, that that's feeling. That's interesting, yeah. Those feelings of failure are really critical for your motivation. You see an old person walking down the street, you go, oh, that person's always been an old person. No, that was a baby. That was a baby that became a 90-year-old man. There's a, there's a progression that you're not witness to. You don't see it. And that, that, that takes place in everything. It takes place in authors. It takes place in comedians and musicians. There is a starting point, and then with time and focus, and as long as you reevaluate and reassess and constantly, objectively look at what you're doing and then pursue it with passion and focus, you get better at things. Don't be scared of failure. I think failure is awesome for you. And that's one of the reasons why, like I said, I like doing things that I suck at. I just feel like people need inspiration and they need guidelines. And if, if as long as you could just start moving, just get action, like just getting, just movement. So for a few months, I was staying with my grandmother who was on death's door for, she lived like a year or so after I moved out. And she wasn't really aware of me anymore. She was not quite there anymore. And my grandfather who was struggling to take care of her and just seemed sad. And I remember thinking, man, this life is temporary. Like this experience that I'm experiencing right now as a 24 year old man, like this is not going to last. Like this is the prime of my youth. And I, it, it like hardened my ideas that like, you gotta get going. This is gonna happen to you too. It's gonna happen to all of us. And you, you, you think that you're this static thing. Like you stay in the same exact state. It's not true, it's an illusion. All those people that you see that are old people, that are walking down the street with their backs hunched over, that, you're gonna reach that age someday. It's going to happen. Yeah. And if you don't pay attention, and it all goes wrong, you could wind up looking like that guy, you could wind up thinking and behaving like that guy. It is a slow ebbing of the life force of the body that's gonna, it's gonna drain you. So, God, man, get your fun out. Get your life out. Just live, you gotta live. It's fucking coming. And you got to remember, because if you don't remember, you're going to sleep in. If you don't remember, you're not going to get anything done. If you don't remember, you're not going to, you're not going to have the, the, the same focus and determination that you would have with the understanding this is a temporary experience. Over time, I've learned that these people, you just, you, you're not going to fix them. I used to want to fix them when I was young. I used to want to go, hey man, I see what you're doing. Like, dude, don't do that anymore. Listen, just try, just just do this and, and stop doing that and start doing this. And if you just work towards this, you could be successful. And then a week later, the guy's doing the same shit. And you're like, okay, right. I'm wasting a significant amount of my energy on someone who doesn't want to waste 
any of their energy on themselves. And so managing the, the community and the tribe that you're in, making sure that you're a good member of that tribe, that you're doing your part. When you're around happy, inspirational people that are successful, it makes you feel better and you get inspired. And if you act on that inspiration, your life will be more fulfilled. And it's not just inspirational in terms of financial success, but in terms of doing difficult things, whether it's running a hundred miles, it doesn't pay you a goddamn thing other than the, 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 the wealth of the knowledge that you can push yourself to such an extreme or anything else, whether it's someone who becomes really good at playing chess or someone who's really good at martial arts or, or whatever it is, there's, there's a great feeling in these overcoming these difficult things. I think a lot of what happiness is is a management issue and decisions that you're making right now, like you could be in a shit state of mind right now, but you can make some decisions to adjust that and over the next couple hours, you'll get to a much better place. It's good to treat other people the way you would like to be treated yourself. It's like a fucking golden rule and there's a reason for it. And that reason is that we're connected in some strange way that we don't totally understand. And unless you are good to other people around you, unless you're kind and friendly and warm and loving, you're not going to fucking enjoy this life. You're just not. You're going to be problems everywhere you go. You're going to have problems everywhere you go. You got to figure out a way to enjoy this fucking life. This is not because of anybody that may or may not have ever existed. It's because that's how you fit in better in the world. That's how you stay positive. And it doesn't have to be some shit that was written 5,000 years ago on fucking animal skins. That doesn't have to be the golden rule because it's old. You know, that's dumb. We need to figure out like now today, what, what is you know, the best way to live your life? What is the, you know, there, there's gotta be ways where you can be putting forward the most positive energy. I mean, we know objectively what's causing pollution. We know objectively what's causing birth defects and, you know, and are, we're taking in too much chemicals and not enough vitamins. We know objectively all this stuff. We know how to organize our world and yet we don't do it. We know how to organize our health and yet very few people do it. We know all these things. The right path to like being like a happy, healthy person is to do all the shit that we already know you're supposed to do. Take care of your body, take care of your health, take care of your mind, your stress, meditate, be kind to people. We all know that. I mean, you ask anybody, they know how to get by and to be the most evolved version of you that you can be. I mean, it's not like a, a magical checklist. If you talk to people about it, you said, okay, here, you're, you got a person, you want to improve them, what are the things that you're going to do to them? Okay, well, if I was a life coach, the first thing I would say is this guy's got to get on a diet that makes him healthy. I don't mean a diet just to lose weight. I mean just healthy foods in your body, many, many vegetables. Start working out your body and get a better sense of like how this machine feels when it's moving, it's flowing better, there's less tension in it, your mind feels like relaxed and, and you enjoy every single moment of the day better. Step one, everybody knows that step, right? What's step two? Be cool to people. Be nice to as many people as you can. Smile at as many people as you can. Have them smile back at you. Tip well when you go to restaurants. Just do the most you can. Be as nice as you can and just still manage to not have people walk all over you. Just get through this life. It's nice as you can do what you want to do with your life right don't don't go be doing something you don't enjoy don't do something that's don't get locked into you know a, a car that you can't afford and doing something crazy because you need the money don't don't do that do what you want to do do what the f is it that you really want to do because if someone else is doing it you can do it you know I mean everybody makes their own path through this world but a lot of people don't follow the path that they really f and feel pulled to you know, just for whatever reason, they got negative programming. You know, when they were kids, someone told them they couldn't do it or told them to take the shortcut or, or take the, uh, the, the sure route. That's a, a sad thing, man, when you talk to dudes, especially like talented dudes, and they don't follow up with what they want to do. You know, it sounds like really hippie, but true happiness comes from making other people happy. True happiness comes from being around happy people and enjoying each other's company. That's really hard for people to wrap their heads around because they always associate true happiness. No, true happiness is with like titles you know, or you know, numbers or you know, objects that you possess. You're, you're, you're not concerned about being nice to people. You're not concerned about having a positive impact on people. You're more concerned with making ones and zeros. But it really truly is how the human race interacts with each other. You, you really have to be nice to other people to be happy. 
You have to. If you're not, you won't be happy. And you know, we all make mistakes and we all find ourselves in positions of frustration and we've all acted out and yelled at our dog when maybe we shouldn't have. And you know, there's all there's pressures in this life. But I think it's really important to recognize what, what those truly are and to understand that at the end of it, we can alleviate a lot of how we deal with in this life. If we really treated people the way we would treat them as if they were ourselves living another life. And right. this includes the way you communicate with people, the friendships that you have and making sure your friends know that you love them. They drive you, they change your opinions, they challenge you, they show compassion, you open up to each other. I mean, this is everything in this life, is community. One of the things that's true is how people, how much people enjoy being around you. That makes your life more enjoyable and people don't mm -hmm. think of it that way. They oftentimes think, I want to be the one that's enjoying life, like especially selfish people. If people enjoy being around you, you'll enjoy everything more. The solo effort of going through life, a narcissistic perspective, one of the major problems with that is there's no one to share it with because you're all out for yourself. Even if you get there, you're gonna be filled with sadness and despair. It's not what you want. What you want is to be happy, right? Well, I know you think that you have to be all about yourself to be happy, but in fact, that is a way to ensure unhappiness regardless of success. That's right. What I'm saying is the way you are with your family and your friends and your loved ones and the people you communicate with, get better at that because we need each other. Love is the most important thing, and that sounds so cliche, but without love, it's all useless. A lot of people say, oh, I just want to sort of, they kinda, they're kind of dabbling in the idea of improving themselves. And the real way to do it is you got to write down what the f*** you want and then go after it. Because otherwise you live in sort of a wishy-washy world. If you decide, I'm going to get down to bang, I'm going to do this, I'm going to run a marathon in less than five hours, I'm going to, you know, whatever the f*** it is, you got to write that shit down and go for it. What I tell people is the best advice that I, I've ever heard, it's the best advice I ever came up with, is it live your life like you're the hero in your movie. And right now is when the fucking movie starts and your life is a shitbag disaster, like every fucking Arnold Schwarzenegger movie where he wakes up and makes a blender full of pizza and ice cream. And that's what he, you know what I mean? Yeah. Those guys where they're like on the brink, they put the gun in their mouth and they put it down because they see a photo of their daughter. Pretend that's you. <laughs> Pretend you are, uh, right now, you're in the part of the movie that starts and it shows you as a fucking loser and just decide not to be a loser anymore. Live your life like there's a documentary crew following you around and you are analyzing your own behavior. Do what you would want to do so that your kids one day would look back at it and, and, and see that documentary and look on it with pride like, wow, my dad was a bad mother He really did what he had to do. Wow, my mom really got her together. I'd love a success story, but even more than a success story, I like a dude who his life up and then gets it back together again story. Those are my favorite stories. And the way to do that, you gotta write it down. You gotta think that you are the hero in your own fucking movie, and then you gotta sit down and you gotta write it down. Write down what you need to do. Most people play the role of the victim in the movie, right? Sure. Yeah, this life is fucking me over, man. I could have had this and I should have had that. And why does this guy get that? And why does that guy get this? And all things that are completely unrelated to you. Yeah. All things that you, you find other people's success as a, a, a downfall in your own existence. Instead of being inspired, instead of choosing to be positive, instead of like improving constantly on, on the direction of trying to achieve whatever the f you have written down, you just sit around and spiral, you know? There's nothing more miserable than sitting around someone who's f***ing complaining all the time. It is one of the most annoying things ever. Everybody hates it. When someone just sits around and they complain about their life and they don't do jack shit about it. And you tiptoe around it, you don't know what to say. Well, she gets upset when you bring that up. I don't want to bring that up. And you want to go, you f***ing crazy bitch, you know what's wrong with your life. Yeah. Stop, stop announcing it to everybody else and go out and fix that shit. Well, when I was 21 and I was first starting to do comedy, that's when I was really devouring as much of it as possible because I was trying to figure out like how to not be so lazy, how to be motivated, how to get done and how to how to like find the correct path and think about things correctly. I would follow all this personal power like you yeah, had workshops that you would do like little like notebooks and shit. Mm. 
fill out and things to talk about and things to concentrate on. Like, if you did do it, it would help you. But really, what it's all about is just getting your together and moving. Just go do something. Just doing it. Just doing it makes you do more. Like, do more hard it makes you do more hard yeah. Understand that you want it bad, so you're willing to put into work and do things you don't want to do. It's what makes you have that confidence that you know how to push through, and the, the, the mentality that I'm the type of dude to get done. Like I'm gonna, show, I'm not gonna waste my day just sitting around a hotel room. No, I'm gonna go to work. That's what I feel like is missing from a lot of people that are getting into motivational this, motivational that. They ain't doing. Shit. You gotta go do something. <laughs> That's the number one thing, right? Is fucking action. Take action. Well, I think the one thing that discipline definitely does help you with is it, it helps you get things done. And when you get things done, when you, you, you actually do things, you, 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 you have more success. If you have more success, and sometimes a, a big part of success is just not being fucking lazy and just doing it. Yeah. Just get, that's like 90% of it is just showing up. Get there and start working. Like, you're not going to feel perfect every day. If I felt, if I only worked out when I felt good, I'd be a fat fuck. Because there's a lot of days I don't want to do it. I mean, it's pretty much the same with everybody that if, that actually gets good at something. You, you get, there's got to be those days you push through. And they're, they're probably going to be more numerous than the days you don't. And so the benefit of discipline in my eyes has always been that through discipline, I get things done. I always tell my, I always say that I'm like, the most lazy disciplined person I know because I don't want to do it yeah but I always do mm -hmm. you know and that you have to sit down you have to overcome resistance and that the pro goes to work and it doesn't matter if you're sick doesn't matter if you have kids it doesn't matter what you you're a pro and you go to work and that and that just it puts it in your head that this is what I do this is what and you have pride in that you know, and yeah you, you you're doing the work yeah. and out of that work gems blossom yep. little things but you might have a day where you just write nothing but dog shit. so what show up again tomorrow and tomorrow out of that dog shit, a flower will emerge you never know and that's the only way to, to really develop your potential 100 percent in anything 